Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabatu fillah There's no Mystery About the fitna that we face In this time In age And some of the biggest trials that we face are or from them are the issue related to the issue of takfir the issue of declaring another Muslim to be a disbeliever also the fitna of tabdir of declaring another Muslim to be an innovator or tafsir declaring another Muslim to be a wicked sinner all of these are ahkam sharia these are sharia rulings and that means those who are ahlan for those rulings, to apply those rulings and understanding those rulings and having hikmah and wisdom and applying those rulings should be the ones engaged in those affairs. It's not for everyone who goes on the YouTube and everyone who is on the internet and looks up this and gets a fatwa from Sheikh Google or this one or that one to involve themselves in these affairs. Nor is it as Imam Salib bin Fozan Hafidhullah Ta'ala mentioned these issues are not for even the beginning students of knowledge. And definitely not for the awam, for the meaning the, the general Muslims should not be involved in these affairs. And this fitna has led to the spilling of blood, the cursing of one another, the attacks against Ahwa Sunnah, some of the people of uh, extremism, Tataraf, the people of Takfir, the people who follow the methodology of the Khawarij, who the Prophet Sallallahu said, Hum kilab an -nar. they're the dogs of the hellfire. That those people who traverse that path, they claim and attack Ahlul Sunnah and declare them to be Murjia when they fit none of the characteristics of Irja. But the issue that arises between them and those people of, uh, who are e extremists is the issue of applying those rulings upon individuals. Those people are quick, they don't look at any of the conditions and the dhawabit, the criterion for making those rulings. Whereas Ahlul Sunnah must adhere to those principles because this is the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is how they applied those principles. It wasn't just from Hawa. It wasn't just that you disagree with me, so I'm going to kill you. You disagree with me, so I'm going to make tikfir of you. You're going to disagree with me, and I'm going to make tabdi of you. No. And that is what distinguishes uh, distinguishes Ahlul Sunnah from Ahlul Bid'ah and Ahwa. So no one understand this. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam said, If tarakatil yahud al itta wa sami'in farqa, وَإِفْتَرَكَتْ النَّصَارَى لَإِثْنَتَيْنَ وَسَرْعِينَ فِرْقَةً وَسَتَفْتَرِكُ هَذِي أُمَّ لَثَلَاثَ وَسَرْعِينَ فِرْقَةً كُلَّهَا فِي النَّارِ لَوَاحِدَةً كُلَّ مَنْ هِيَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ قَالَ مَنْ كَانَ عَلَى مِثْلِ مَا كَانَ عَلَيْهِ وَأَصْحَابِهِ The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said The Jews would break into 71 sects and the Christians would break into 72 sects and my Ummah would break into 73 sects all of them in the fire illa wahid, except one. This is an authentic hadith of the Prophet They said, Men hiya ya Rasulullah. Who are they, ya Rasulullah? The Prophet answered, he said, those who are upon what I'm upon and what my companions are upon. So when you look at groups like ISIS and Boko Haram and Al-Shabaab, and you can't really distinguish much, they all have various uh, traits in the territory that they hold and their goals to a degree but their goals are very similar and their means involve spilling the blood of Muslims mainly mainly who you see who they kill and we don't advocate killing anyone but we advocate adhering to the Quran and the Sunnah according to the madhab of the Salaf that jihad yes it's a part of Islam and jihad is according to conditions and shurud and jihad is according to 
those principles that the Prophet ﷺ laid down for us. They're not based upon our desires. They're not based upon fitna and killing and slaughtering Muslims. So those groups make it convenient. They use takfir conveniently so that way they can justify because even they know that killing and destroying the property of Muslims is unlawful. So what they do as a matter of convenience is they declare takfir. They say, hey, those guys are not really authentic Muslims anyway. That they have such and such bid'ah, mukaffara, or even they don't even justify this. They just kill. They differ with us. They're, they're not supporting the Sharia because we are supporting the Sharia. This is their logic. So then they kill. Look at how some of the groups, like Al-Qaeda, uh, Jamaat al-Nusra in Syria, and how uh, Daesh or ISIL or ISIS, whatever you want to call them, how they have fought many battles, killing one another and declaring takfir of one another just for their differences. Not even, where is the Islam in that? And do you want to involve yourself in these kind of struggles of fitna? Do you want to be brought before your Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and question? about the evil that you spread on the earth being of those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Al-Baqarah Yufsiduna fil ard Yufsiduna fil ard Yukhadi'una Allah Walladheena amanu Wa ma yakhda'una illa anfusuhum They try to deceive Allah and the believers but they only deceive themselves because they think they're on the haqq but instead they're spreading batal and fa falsehood and causing facade around the earth, spreading wickedness and slaughtering Muslims and anything and everyone in their path without any looking at the Sharia rulings. And what is more dalil of this? These are easy for me to make these claims, even though the ev ev evidence tatbiki is, is ample. But look at what happened, look at, for example, here in Saudi Arabia recently, and in Yemen recently, just yesterday, and in Chad uh, a couple of days ago as well. All of these situations, or several of these situations, these people dressed as women. Where in Islam, the Prophet Sallallahu cursed the man who resembles the woman and the woman who resembles the man, but those people are any means necessary people. They're not in Islamic menhaj, kitab, illahu sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and al They're not on that. For them, it's any means necessary. For them, it doesn't matter if it's a Marxist path. It doesn't matter if it's a kamikaze path. It doesn't matter if... It, that's their sunnah. Their sunnah is suicide belts. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbid it. Allah forbid. Killing yourself. But they say, no, we're striking at the enemy. No, these are amaliyat ishtishhariya. That these are, uh, these are martyrdom operations. So they gave a new name. But what do the ulama say all throughout history? What is the fifth principle? And I mentioned it countless times. Al-ibra bihaqayat laysa bi musammiyat. That the proof of something is in its reality, not in what it's called. Doesn't matter what you you change the name, you're still blowing yourself up, and mostly you only caught you kill other Muslims, and mostly it only causes more fitna for other Muslims, the Muslims around the world, and for Dawah the law. And we're here to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that the Maqsud? Blowing up and slaughtering and killing people? Is that is that the purpose of Islam? What Islam is this? This has nothing to do with Kitabi Law Sunnah Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the madhab of the salaf, and we are free from them. Ahlul Sunnah, the Salafiyun, and the Muslims in general are free from this kind of wicked evil that's spread around the earth in the name of Islam, in the name of Jihad. They tarnish the name of Jihad. They call themselves Mujahideen, but they blow, they recruit uh, women and, 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 and young boys from around the world. strip them of their Islamic identity and give them the identity of the Khawarij and then they do these operations. So they lost in the dunya and they lost in the akhirah.
So I have a tip in law. Beware of this kind of fitna and the fitna of these lesser Dajjal. Some of the reasons, what are some of the reasons that we come to this? We'll be very brief. The asbab li fitna, middle Muslimin, obey a Muslimin. One of the reasons that we have for this kind of fitna is weak iman. Because often what you'll find, a lot of times people who are recruited from around the earth, a lot of them, many of them were not practicing before. But then they, all of a sudden they find iltizam and they find a new ideology. It feels good or they want good. But they were, before they were in the nightclubs, before they shaved their beards, before she wasn't wearing hijab, before they were smoking weed, before they were committing zina regularly, before they were before and before. And then they find a new identity. And they've been preached and it sounds good because they want to make up for all that wickedness they did. But it's just that they didn't realize that making up for wickedness is not made up by wickedness. That is not how you cure Iman. But you cure Iman by looking at those things that the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ encourages you to do. Encourages you to help cure the sickness of weak Iman. Reading the Quran, fasting, doing those things. Naam going fi sabilillah. It's one of the highest deeds you can do. But what you have to question is when you go to these places of conflict, are they fi sabilillah or fi sabilil shaitan? The second thing, ya habit al is hubb dunya is loving the dunya. This is one of the reasons. Some of the Muslims, they cling to the dunya, this worldly life, so much. And it causes them to... Uh, be dis to uh, distort their perception of life and this materialism and they'll do anything to maintain that and this is what you have in the case of some of those evil shayateen who cling to their power and slaughter their people at any expense and at any cost like Bashar I mean he's a, 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 a disbeliever anyway from the Asl his Asl is disbelief he's a, a, a Kafir he never was a Muslim and then you have people like other others who cling and kill they cling to their power and they kill and they'll do anything to maintain that this is love of the dunya takabbar also related to that is arrogance and ta'asab this is very important why do people fall into this extremism why do they say no there's no other way and I'll kill you for disagreeing with me this is what they say it's from ta'asab it's from blindly and following and being prejudiced to their sheikh, to their understanding, without any exception. No looking at it from the sharia. They, they, you give them an ayah, you give them a hadith, they don't really want to hear that. Unless it goes with, in agreement and in accordance with the understanding of their sheikh, with the understanding of their emir, of their jama'ah, with the understanding of their his, of their group. And this goes with those who make the tikfir and kill, and this is also the same danger that you find with those people who quickly and are severe in making tabdi of everyone. Everyone who differs with them, they're a muqtadiya. And this is why. They disagree with my sheikh, my sheikh made this fatwa, and they don't go with it, they're a muqtadiya. This is the, the mentality. And a lot of it is from ta'asim. And finally, I'll mention one last thing, as was mentioned, is... Jahan bil ahkam al or shari, that more often than not, you have people they've cut and pasted their religion together, and they don't, they're not grounded in these affairs, and they involve themselves in them. They involve themselves, and they will strive. This is the zeal that groups like Al Qaeda and, and ISIS they tap into in the Western communities. People, some people who are new Muslims or people who are Muslims, but now they want to really practice. They have, they they want to do good. But as, I believe it's an author of Imam uh, Ali ibn Abi Talib, where he said, how many people want good, but never attain that? They want good, but they don't attain that. Why? Because two things, if you want your deeds accepted in Islam, two uh, things need to be in place. Two, Conditions. First, is that it's sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we know all the evidences. And how do 
how many ahadith in ma'amal al-diniyat, verily actions are tied to the intention. So much nasus lets us know that we have to be sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and whatever we do, if we want to consider that, they bad worship in Islam. The second condition is that it has to be in accordance with the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa So ask yourself, is this what you understand from the seerah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he was just harsh with the whole world, harsh with his brothers and sisters, severe upon his brothers and sisters, calling to kill and slaughter to maintain to, to gain a means? Or was he a rahmin, a rahmin lil alameen? Was he a mercy for mankind as Allah described him? And as the Prophet mentioned about being lean and rift, that there's no that no affair is will have benefit except that it's with gentleness, letting us know that that's the asl. The asl that the, the root of how we should interact with, between us and with the world is through gentleness. Then, if there is maslaha and using other means, then you use other means. But the means are never consist of blowing ourselves up and, and killing innocent people, dressing up as women, blowing up in places of worship. All of these things forbidden by the Prophet wasallam. But what does your shaykh say? And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam. Ala nabiyyana Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.